friends neat pg is so near and if you ask me to teach one topic that is going to be there in your exam this is going to be one and before it i want to tell you that you just can't beat that person who never gives up so i want you to be this person who never gives up because it is the mindset which separates the best from the rest so you have to separate yourself from others and that topic which i am going to teach you very fast here is the physiological changes in pregnancy mark my word this topic is going to be there in your examination so bmr in pregnancy increases by 10 to 20% average weight gain is 12.5 kg and why this occurs because of salt and water retention due to estrogen okay so salt and water retention due to estrogen resulting in डायल्यूशनल हाइपोनेट्रीमिया वाटर का कंटेंट बढ़ता है सीरम सोडियम घटता है ड्यू टू डायल्यूशनल हाइपोनेट्रीमिया ओके इसके वजह से प्लाज्मा ऑल्सो ऑस्मोलैरिटी ऑल्सो फॉल्स डब्ल्यू बी सी देर इज फिजियोलॉजिकल राइज दैट इज न्यूट्रोफिलिया बट दिस इज नॉट सिमिलर टू फीवर ओके दिस इज फिजियोलॉजिकल मैक्सिमम न्यूट्रोफिलिया अकर्स इन पोस्ट इमीडिएट पोस्टमार्टम दैट इज it will be around or below 20000 and not above it okay so all the clotting factors increases in pregnancy except two clotting factor which is a separate question already asked 11 and 13 average platelet count decreases by normal okay so wbc is bad hai but platelet count ghat raha hai total iron requirement in pregnancy is 1 g or 1000 mg you should also know in first half it is 3 to 4 mg per day in second half it is 6 to 7 mg per day total iron requirement of fetus in pregnancy is 300 mg per day anemia in pregnancy sorry not per get per day it is 300 mg okay so when you will say that there is anemia in pregnancy it is when less than 11 g per cent insulin resistance in pregnancy occurs due to human placental lactogen hormone hpl hormone now what is this hpl hormone you should know something about that it is anti insulin hormone and it released by 3 weeks of gestation t half is 30 minute promotes lipolysis and prepare the best for lact lactation what happens is there is fasting hypoglycemia and postprandial hypoglycemia now in cvs we will discuss it system wise in cvs you have to learn this 40 and 20 now what is this 40 and 20 plasma volume increases by 40% cardiac output increases by 40% while the rbc mass increases by 20% and thus oxygen requirement increases by 20% now this is just to make you remember okay this 40 20 another thing is oxygen carrying capacity of the blood in decreases as well as the atriovenous oxygen gradient also decreases in pregnancy heart moves upward and rotated anteriorly and the apex beat is found near fourth intercostal space and the heart rate increases by 20% that is the it ranges from 10 to 18 10 beats increase in first trimester up till 18 till third trimester now they if you if they ask you whether the murmurs are physiological in pregnancy yes they are but only systolic murmur and that two up till grade 2 so all the murmurs are not physiological and specifically diastolic murmur are pathological now you know you do you know that s3 can also be heard physiologically that is gallop rhythm is physiological and there is a physiological left axis deviation in case of pregnancy the atrial and ventricular premature beats that is extra systoles are also physiological the chest x ray may show a straightening of left heart border but there is no cardiomegaly in pregnancy that is the in pregnancy cardiomegaly is always and always pathological now the systolic blood pressure as well as diastolic blood pressure both falls in pregnancy but do you know that diastolic blood pressure falls more than systolic why because the systemic vascular resistance on which the diastolic blood pressure depends falls more due to progesterone and estrogen action now progesterone is a smooth muscle relaxant and estrogen is resistant against the vasopressors so these two causes decrease in dbp more than sbp and what happens is there is maximum fall in bp in second trimester and by the third trimester bp becomes to increase and comes to normal now there is 
something called supine hypotension syndrome which you should know that it results due to compression of the inferior vena cava and resulting in low venous return and thus the BP in decreases and to maintain this utero placental circulation we have to make the mother in left lateral position to increase so fetal oxy oxygenation thus increases by 10 percent by, by, by making this mother into left axis division now moving to the CVS uh, more something more about the CVS of the baby the heart rate normal is not 120 but 110 to 160 and in bradycardia will be anything less than 110 and tachy anything greater than 160 now if I ask you what percent of fetal cardiac output increases means enter into the pulmonary circulation so it is only the 10 percent of the baby total cardiac output which goes to the pulmonary circulation and what is the sequence they may ask you the sequence when the baby get delivered it exposes to the external environment what is the sequence which the baby follows for the closure so it is artery vein and vein artery and then foramen oval so umbilical artery closes first then umbilical vein and then ductus venosus ductus arteriosus and then foramen oval so foramen oval is the last one to close and that is why sometime the persistent the opening remains persistent now moving to the renal system there is two separate things renal blood flow and the GFR so both are different both increase but the percentage is different the renal blood flow increases by 70 to 80 percent in early pregnancy and 50 to 60 percent by term in case above the normal pregnancy while the GFR increases by 50 percent in pregnancy which is a separate question resulting in decrease in serum creatinine in the blood urea nitrogen now glycosuria may be physiological a small amount may be physiological in pregnancy because there is increase in um, there is decrease the renal threshold for glucose decreases and thus glycosuria can be physiological but the thing which is to be noted is protein urea any amount is pathological in case of pregnancy Physiologically, you will also see or you can see hydronephrosis or hydroureter due to the action of progesterone. And what we can see is right sided hydronephrosis is more com common than left because the uterus is normally dextrorotated and, con and compresses the right ureter. That is why right sided hydronephrosis is more common. Now, both the kidney may raise by the 1 cm and stress urinary continuance is physiological in case of pregnancy due to the action of progesterone on the urethral inspector which relaxes it now something about the baby's renal system now this is a repeated mcq when the urine production in starts in baby it is 12 week and urine production at term is 27 milliliter per hour or 650 ml per day okay so fetal urine which is produced at 12 week is hypoosmotic to the fetal plasma now moving to another system that is GIT. Now focus here. AST and ALT both are decreasing physiologically but the ALP is increasing due to placental ALP. So PLAP is a heat stable isoform placental ALP. Another thing which happens in GIT is cholestasis due to the action of estrogen which inhibits binding of bile salts with fast. Now something interesting you to note is that there is no change in gastric emptying time in pregnancy while oesophageal reflux due to relaxation of lower oesophageal in sphincter may occur due to action of progesterone into the it and causing the relaxation of LES lower oesophageal in sphincter okay and only time where the gastric emptying time may increase is during labor that is why they are kept on npm of or on fluid now moving to another important aspect that is the pulmonary circulation which is very important and sometimes very confusing so you should note that the tidal volume increases while there is no change in respiratory rate the depth of respiration increases and again this 40 comes but here with pulmonary ventilation so it increases by 40 percent so they may ask you just the exact value and you should know that very by heart also you should know that the progesterone sensitivity of respiratory center to co2 increases and causing more co2 wash out that is mild respiratory alkalosis occur but in spite of this mild respiratory alkalosis the ph of blood remains normal can you tell me why because the kidney is here compensating 
the pH to normal by increased excretion of bicarbonate and this causes the level of serum bicarbonate to decrease. So serum bicarbonate decreases, pH remains normal and respiratory wash out of CO2 occur. Now the diaphragm moves up by 4 cm and the transverse diameter of thorax increases by 2 cm. Okay. So this 4 and 2 are also important. Again 4, 2, 40, 20. So all in 4, 2 something. Now. So this is the summary. The total lung capacity is decreasing. Vital capacity no change. Expiratory respiratory volume decreases. IRV no change and tidal volume increases. So if you see by formula TVC that is the vital capacity is equal to summation of these three ERC, IRV and TV. Now if TV is increasing, ERV is decreasing so IRV should remain constant so that VC should not change. Now something about pulmonary circulation you should also know fetal pulmonary circulation. Okay. So fetal pulmonary circul circulation the lungs develops from endoderm. Okay. The pleura is from mesoderm. And if I ask you the heart or the CVS of the baby fetal develops from mesoderm. Okay. So CVS from mesoderm, lungs from endoderm and pleura again from mesoderm. Now three important questions. When the surfactant synthesis occur or starts in baby. So it is by 20th week. But the second question. When the surfactant appear in amniotic fluid. It is by 28th week. Okay. 28th week. Now most commonly used test to, to see the fetal lung maturity most commonly okay best is something else so most commonly is L by S ratio which should be greater than 2 for the lung to be matured so L by S is lecithin by sphingomyelin but if I ask you the best test it will be phosphatidyl glycerol estimation so this was all about the physiological changes in pregnancy the whole lecture was based upon the lessons taught by the master of master that is Dr. Deepthi Bell from DAMS. Now some more uh, data from here like they may ask you ki this equivalent 20 mg of hydrocortisone equals to 20 mg of cortisol equals to 5 mg of prednisolone equals to 4 mg of methylprednisolone. So they may give you something to convert. So it's just a normal data you can note them, note them down. And I think yeah, this is something which, should you, which you should revise just one day before exam. If you cannot read it, just listen it while you are to the while you are going to the exam center, because this is something which they are going to ask, and this will be in your exam paper. So this is Dr. Shivam signing off, and thank you all.